Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's Netflix original series, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance, season one, episode five. She knows all the secrets. That's coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. The hunter has captured Rion, and the hunter makes it well known that he takes pride in all of his trophies, all of his hunts, and he cannot wait to take him back to the Skeksis to show him his devourment, what he's captured. And Chamberlain says, I need this Gelfling to be alive and well because I want to show the Emperor what I can do, get my seat back, and then at the same time, make the battle general look crazy. The fact that you realize assigned him in my place and demoted me but I was able to do what you thought he could do so the hunter says well promise me that after you show the emperor and after you show the rest of the sketches that I can devour him because that's what I take pride in and he says I'll let you do that I'll let you do that so the hunter kind of gives him his, his space and we have Chamberlain speaking to Rion and Rion says I know that it's on you and he starts to pat him down and he's looking for the the essence that he took from him a while back and he's saying where is this essence and Rion is screaming no 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 and he finally finds the essence that is of Mira and he proceeds to drink it and he says mm, lovely essence mm, I'm just love it and of course Rion is screaming and he is so sad because that is all that is left of Mira. It was her essence in that valve and now that that's gone he has nothing left of her and he is left screaming and Chamberlain says this is the beginning of everything. If you just go along with it and don't fight everything will be fine because of course he has what he thinks to be the destiny with the scientists. Back at the castle of Hara, the soldiers are showing all Madra that the animals are changing. It's something wrong with them. They're laying eggs that are not fertile. They are breaking out of their gates and their behavior is something that they've never seen. And they want her to take note that something is wrong. They thought that people were breaking in and taking the animals, but in actuality, they had enough proof that the breaking of the gates happened from the inside. We have the Emperor and we have the battle general they have made it to the castle of Hara and they're telling all Madra that we need seven of your strongest Gelfling who will fight with us and make sure that we stay safe because there is threat of a rebellion and she wants to go more into it well maybe this is happening because of this they're like don't you know don't worry about that we need seven of your strongest Gelfling to come with us and we can't guarantee their safety back. So are you going to give us our seven volunteers or what? And she says, well, I am of service to you and whatever you need to keep the world of Thra safe and everybody and all the Gelflings safe. So they says, well, yes, we need them now. Give us your strongest Gelfling. Hup or should I say, Hup, <laughs> Hup and Deet. They finally reach the land of Hara, and they are looking around at this city, and they're really underdressed. Um, they have like really lax clothes on, and everyone around them has on fine silks and linen, and they have carriages, and they have silk shawls that are over their faces, and glittery metallic uh, pearls and things that they have on their clothing and Deet says I don't know if we're gonna have any luck going into the palace especially the way that we look and Hop is looking around and he sees that there's a little dress store that's to the side and he sees that it has different jewelry and things just out in the open and people are just looking at it and Deet looks at Hop like 
don't think about it, don't do it. But Huck runs off and he steals a couple of things for her to wear and for her to put on. And in his own little language, he's telling her, you've got to put this on, we've got to blend in, because if we don't, we can't get to the gates to get to the palace. So they think of this little white lie and they go up to the gate and Hup says, oh, she, very important, must speak to, to, um, mantra and get message very important so the the guard sees how fancy she looks so it's got to be true and he says well what is this message and he says it's you know secret must tell self and and Deed says you know she's looking at with the big eyes and not saying much as if he's her representative so they look like they have some sort of importance because he looks like her assistant and she looks by the way she's dressed like she's of someone of importance and the soldier says I'll escort you up there myself so you can get the message across so gladly he starts to open the gate and they get in meanwhile we have Tavra her brother, which are the siblings of Gurjan, who is still in captivity. And we have Kylan, one of their soldier friends that came with them in order to help to rescue Gurjan. And they're sneaking in the castle where the Skeksis are, and they're telling each other, be careful, beware, they're all over this castle, stay focused, and let's try to bring him home. While they do so, we have the sister of Gurjan who notices that the emperor is going into this area where there's an opening of the floor and where the crystal is, and he is pulling all of the darkness into his scepter, and he's trying to understand how to control this darkness. At the same time that he's trying to control the darkness he doesn't look like himself he looks like there are little pieces of him that are dying so we can get an idea that as he brings darkness into the scepter the con of it all is that he's slowly slowly diminishing as Chamberlain takes Rion back to the Skeksis he tells him in order to help this process I need you to tell the Skeksis and everybody else that you killed Mira. You killed her, nothing ever happened, because if you don't say that, you could start a rebellion, and that could lead to a lot of your Gelfling friends to die, and you don't want a war, and you don't want this rebellion, and you don't want people even questioning what the Skeksis are doing, and Rian says, I know the truth, I'm not gonna admit to something that I didn't do, and he tells him, do you really think that the Gelfling are more powerful than the Skeksis? Do you really think that if you don't tell this lie that others won't benefit from it? You're already going to die. You see where you're going. Just let them know the truth in which I want you to say is you actually ki killed Mira, that you didn't see me drink her essence, and that is what I need you to say. And Rion says no. I won't do it. Princess Brea and Princess Celadon, they are arguing back and forth. And Celadon says, you can never be responsible. You see everything that's going on and you can't be responsible. You're not even at your place of punishment, which is of um, the order of lesser service. And you're here. Why are you here? And Princess Brea said, there is a mystic creature that is under mother's throne that is trying to tell us something and we must stop what we're doing we must go down there and we must listen to him and I want to show everybody what he has to say and Celadon is just not have having it you're always in the library you can always do these adventures you get punished and you don't even fulfill your punishment and while they're arguing all Madra comes in and she says, you know, what is this mischief? And she says, well, Brea, what are you doing here? Why aren't you with the Order of Lesser Service? And she says, well, I escaped and I know that was wrong, but, but now we have this stone mystic creature that is under your throne right now and we've got to see what he's trying to tell us. And the mother isn't having it. She's telling her, grow up. 
your, we don't have time for your adventures and all of your stories. And Ray is like, this is real. It's there. And also, I have visions that I want to share with you if you dream fast with me. The mother isn't having it. She says, both of you settle down. I have the Skeksis. They're coming here because they want to speak with us. And Brea says, the, the Skeksis are here? Some of them are here. They want to speak to us? And she says, yes. So be on your ones and twos, basically, and just be quiet and follow along accordingly because they're coming. Our responsibility is to make sure the Skeksis are uh, well taken care of. We listen to them. They do, we do what they want because they are the protectors of the crystal. Madra, she finally says, you know what? <sighs> Let me just at least take a look. And Celadon is saying, mother, you know, like, are you serious? And she says, yes, let me just take a moment to see with what Brea is talking about because it must be important. And Celadon says, but you have a responsibility to look at things of more importance. And uh, Madra tells Celadon, you'll understand when you're in my seat. You'll understand when you're in my role that you have to spread yourself accordingly just to see what, what things are going on and not to be so dismissive that we might miss something. And she gives her a hug and Celadon is heated and she's looking at Brea like, you always get your way. And Celadon snatches off and goes on to her other responsibilities. So we already see the character is getting very angry with Brea and everyone around her. Meanwhile, we have Ogra. She's in her, a special place where she goes to her tree to meditate, and to look at symbols, and she's trying to gather anything she can that may help her to share the information with everyone about what she's seen, but also being very hesitant and careful about who sees the information because she doesn't want to cause any panic and she wants to understand how this trouble came about to the crystal while she was in her mist. She's taken responsibility for not being um, the protector of the crystal and letting the Skeksis have it and she's really really just being a tough love to herself and saying, how did you let this happen? You let your own interests uh, disguise the fact that the crystal wasn't protected. She's looking at the animals and the animals are slowly being consumed by this darkness. She picks up a little creature and she sees that his eyes are purple. And she sees that he's angry and fidgeting and out of character of the way that this animal usually is. So she knows it's something that she has to do. And she's thinking to herself, I've got to find a way, but I don't know where to start and I don't know where to begin. So she's starting this deep meditation to find out who she can reach to get this message across that they're all in danger and that the crystal is in danger and has been infected by this darkness. Armadra finally sees what Brea was speaking of underneath her throne and she says, wow, all of this was underneath my throne and she says, yes, this is the st stone creature and I think she says worn or ward. I can't really, couldn't really hear what she says, but it sounds like she said ward, ward and she's just amazed by what she's seeing, but finally she is able to see some truth about what Princess Brea has been telling her. Have the Emperor and the Battle General, they are observing the strongest seven volunteers that have been sent back to their palace, and they're looking at them, and the Battle General says, what's wrong with that one? What's wrong with his face? And he says, hmm. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I think he's just old. <laughs> the battle general says, well, I don't like that. Get rid of him. <laughs> and the, and the Geffling starts to look at them like, and he starts to walk away. And this is the part that had me just cracking up laughing. As he's walking away, the Geffling, that, that's so old, he says, oh, I'm not that old. <laughs> That gave me a tickle. <laughs> so anyway, he leaves and they're looking at the rest of them and he says, hmm, 
the, uh, uh, the emperor says, I like this one. And the battle general said, well, he's little. And he's like, it's not about him being little. It's, it's the essence of who he is. It's the stamina. And he's just like, mm. and the other guests are like, <laughs> wait a minute. Why he, why he looking at us like we dinner? <laughs> Rion is still being escorted by Chamberlain in this carriage. And all of a sudden they hear walking on the top of the carriage. And they're like, well, what, well, what's that? And all of a sudden we hear, ha ha. <laughs> And it's Gurjan and Naya, and, and and they are just and, and just and Rion, and they're just ready, and they're fighting, and they're trying to rescue him, and they're punching, and the carriage is going all over the place. So they have a nice action sequence of capturing Rion, and Chamberlain crashes in the carriage, and he's okay, but he's upset that his carriage is messed up and he's lost his trophy to take back to the emperor. Now we have Rion, Ryan, Naya, and Gurjan <laughs> all together recuperating from the cat, the crash. They meet up where Kylan <laughs> is waiting for them and he says, oh, perfect timing, I just made some porridge. And they all sit down and Rion says to Gurjan, I'm so happy that they were able to rescue you and I'm so happy that you're okay. And he gives him a hug and Gurgeon is like, oh, please don't hug me too much. I'm still tender for when the Skeksis were keeping me captive. So please be careful. Deet and Hup, they finally gotten in the castle of Hara. And when they're in there, they're being escorted by the soldier. And Celadon says, wait, who is this? And she says, uh, and she says, you're not of someone of importance. You just have on the attire. You just have on the, clo the clothes. Why are you here? And she says, well, my name is Deet. And she goes on to tell the story about why she's here. And she's like, wait, you're not of here, are you? And she says, no, I'm not. But I have an important message that I need to get to um, Al Madra. And I need to tell her. And Celadon says, well, you either tell it to me or don't tell it to anyone. So Deed goes into this long dialogue and they cut back and forth of her telling her this story. And she says, well, I could just show it to you. Dream fast with me. And Celadon is saying, when is the last time you washed your hands? And Deed says, well, why would I wash my hands? <laughs> And while she's trying to explain to Celadon about why she's there and about how everybody is in danger and about how darkness is spreading, we have Ogra. She is still in her place meditating and she's chanting, Saladora, Gandarora, you know, saying all of these certain things. And she's gathering her thoughts collectively as she's pulling information together. We have Brea and her mother. They're still under the throne and they're still with the stone creature. And her mother is telling her, I'm so sorry that I didn't believe you and that I didn't listen to you. How did you find all of this and what all do you know? And she says, mother, dream fast with me and I'll show you. So they attach hands. We also have Rion. He's with everybody else and of course they're eating and he tells them, my father sacrificed himself for me. But something is going wrong and I don't know what it is, but these Skeksis are Skeksis I've never seen. And the one that captured me, he had on a mask. And this is just unusual. And one of them says, well, why don't you dream fast with us? Show us. So he joins with all of them in a circle as they dream fast. And then at the same time, we have Deet who has collected hands with Celadon. So you have these three areas all at the same time who are beginning to dream fast and to share their vis visuals and what they've seen. And at the same time, you have Ogra who's still chanting and saying her words and it's slowly bringing everybody together as they're dream fasting all at the same time. Rion he slowly opens up his eyes and he sees the crystal and he says, 
I'm back at the castle. And all of a sudden we see Ogren. She says, no, you're not in the castle. You have reached dream space. And she's happy and she's like, we, I've finally been able to come and capture the dream space and bring somebody with me. And we see that her all seeing third eye has been opened on her forehead and it is this yellow glowing eye that is there and she's saying you are not um, at the castle you are in dream space and sl and so slowly he sees Deet and Deet is there she says Ryan and he says yes Deet you're here what are you doing here and she says I was dream fasting and all of a sudden you hear I was too and I was too so everyone that was dream fasting collectively at that time has all appeared at the same time with Ogre. And she's telling everyone, we are here, we have been called by the crystal because we all must unite together because there's darkness that's spreading and we must get together collectively to go against the Skeksis because something's not right, they're using the crystal in the wrong way and it is calling us to this responsibility that we all must work together to defeat them. As Celadon comes out of it, she realizes and sees that Deet is still in her dream space and she's just like this, like... <laughs> So she's still in the dream space and Celadon is telling the soldiers, do not let these two traitors, which she's pointing to Hup and Deet, telling them, these are traitors here, do not let them escape. I must go to see the Skeksis to let them know that we have traitors amongst us. So as she does that, we have still the rest of them in the dream space and Olga, Olga is telling them, yes, Feel this power, feel the crystal, and you all are in the midst of the crystal. And while they're there, they're seeing all of the truths and all of the visions. They're seeing Deet when she came upon the century tree. They're seeing what Rion saw, and everybody is seeing the truth. And above them is the big symbol that represents all of the Gelfling clans as a whole. So as they're seeing this, you have Celadon that reach, reaches the Skeksis area and she tells them, we have traitors amongst the mist. And the Skeksis don't even know who she is and they're like, what sister is this one? And he's like, I don't know, let's just listen to her. So she goes on to tell them everything that she knows. After everybody has come out of the dream fast, we do see uh, Madra and, and Brea go back to where they were, which was the palace, and they see that the two people which are Deet and Hup, they are being held by the soldiers and Madra says, let them go, they're not enemies of ours. So she lets them go and then she walks into her, um, what is it called? She walks into her chamber only to see the, the emperor and the battle general talking to Celadon. And Madra says, what is going on? You're speaking to my daughter, unhand her. And they go, no, we've actually learned that there are some traitors amongst us. And the mother Al Mantra says, for the longest time, I've stepped to the side and I've ignored you stealing from poor Gelfling, how you've drained power from a lot of people, how you've been evil no more, how I've constantly turned a blind eye to your selfishness, your, your meanness, no more. So then all of a sudden we see the battle General Skeksy pull out his sword and then he says, well, you are no more. More. and he proceeds to slash her with his sword and unfortunately we have Almadra she dies after Almadra is killed we have Celadon and Brea they're on the ground clutching onto their mother crying and all of a sudden Celadon rises slowly and looks at Brea and tells her it's all your fault and Brea says, no, no, you've mistaken. No, no, this is not my fault. And the emperor tells uh, Celadon, what do you think we should do next? And Celadon says to her soldiers, take away these traitors now. And Brea is telling her, no, it's not too late. This is a big mistake that you're making. And the emperor says, well, Hopefully you don't mind that we take these traitors with us back 
back to the palace and she says no and he tells her don't cry over your mother even you said that she's a traitor you actually did a good thing you are the loyal one and she says well yes anything anything for you and he says all praise to you all matra Ooh. <laughs> so that was the end of the episode. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. See you for the next episode. Bye.